Christ is the light of the nations. And the glory of God's people of Israel. As people of Christ, you are the light of the world. And let your light so shine before others. That they may see your good works. And give glory to your Father in heaven. Come, light of God, enlighten our hearts. Let your light dwell in us. Amen. February 2nd is celebrated as the Feast of the Presentation of Our Lord. It's also known as Candlemas, a day historically when candles are blessed for the coming of the church year. This is why we had the procession with the candlelight today, um, based upon the Song of Nicodemus, which we, will also, which we will actually sing and hear three different times in today's service, where Nicodemus proclaims um, that that Christ is the light to enlighten the Gentiles and the glory of the people Israel. So this is a day of light. This is a day of proclamation. This is a day when, we, when our Lord was presented and when we present our lives to God. Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ and the promised gifts of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, your only begotten Son was presented this day in the temple. May we be presented to you with clean and pure hearts by the same Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Malachi. See, I am sending my messengers to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver." until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old and as in former years. Word of God 
word of light. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. 
guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer day and night. At that moment, she came and began praising God and speaking about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Israel. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Will the children please come up and join me? Good morning. Well, I love the story we just read today from the Bible because we have people gathering at the temple of all ages. Who's the youngest one there in that story I just read? Who do you? It was baby Jesus. Yeah, he was about maybe 30 or 40 days old. He was really, really little. And then there were some old people. We do not know for sure how old Simeon was. Oh, but Jesus' parents were there too, Mary and Joseph, right? How old do you think they would have been, maybe? Maybe 30s, yeah. Maybe, maybe Mary was a little bit younger. Um, yeah. And then we had the people that the Bible says were very old. Their names were Simeon and Anna. And the Bible doesn't tell us how old Simeon is, but... We get the idea that he's old, and it does tell us how old Anna is. Now, how old do you think is old? Give me a number. 80, you think is old? What do you think, Grace? 90. 90, you think is old. Okay, well, Anna was, any other guesses? 75? 75? Hmm? That's when you count old as 75. Oh, do you have one, Declan? Around 85. Okay, well, Anna was 84. So you guys are all in the range there. Now, and Anna and Simeon took baby Jesus in their arms. Well, Simeon took Jesus in his arms, and he praised God, and he says, Now, Lord, I have seen the light of your salvation. When he saw Jesus, he knew that he had seen God. And, they, and then Anna and Simeon told everybody about Jesus right from the start. Now, we cannot say thank you to Anna and Simeon anymore. Do you know why? They are dead. Yes, they are because nobody lives to be that old. But we have here in our congregation, I would think, some people who are 84 years old or more. If you are 84 years old or older, will you please raise your hand? Look at those people that are more than 84. And these are people, you can put your hand down now. Wasn't it nice I didn't make you stand? Um, <laughs> these are people just like Simeon and Anna who have faithfully come to church, who tell people about Jesus' love, who have seen for more than 84 years the light of God shining in their lives and their world. And we can't say thank you to Simeon and Anna, but we can say thank you to these people, some of the old people of our church. Um, Pastor Phyllis said I shouldn't. I, <laughs> Pastor Phyllis said you shouldn't say that they're old. So, okay. 
I was glad nobody said, um, you know, 64 when you were saying how old was old. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I want, if you're 84 or older, I want you to say nice and loud, I have seen the light of God's salvation. I have seen the light of God's salvation. And I want you to say, praise God. Praise God. And now I want you to say, thank you. Thank you to all of you whose lives of faith and wisdom enrich the lives of our children and our whole congregation. You are indeed a blessing to us. And we remember you and thank God for you on this day of Jesus' preparation. Presentation. Children, stand up, fold your hands, and let's pray. Dear God, thank you for letting your light shine in our lives through each one of us, no matter what our age is, and for bringing us together so that we can tell of your goodness. Amen. Thank you, and thank you for helping with the candles before, too. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. There was also a prophet, Anna. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of? Very good. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. Throughout my ministry and to this day, I've known people like Simeon and Anna. I'm sure you have too. Those faithful elders who watch the world through the eyes of faith, looking forward to a better day, longing in hope for the time when God will set things right. Simeon and Anna witnessed the oppression of the Roman Empire, the corruption of religious leaders, and a society that neglected the poor and needy. They had their personal griefs, too. Anna had been widowed most of her life. Legend tells us that Simeon was going blind. But they did not despair. They did not wallow in their complaints and their tears. Like so many of God's faithful people down through the ages, they looked as the, at the world as it was and clung to the hope that God was still at work, that God would bring salvation. So Simeon and Anna kept coming to the temple. They maintained their disciplines of prayer and fasting. They strove for what was good, what was right, what was just. They continued praising God, and they waited eagerly for the salvation God had promised. I think we've all been blessed to know people like that. People who won't let the darkness swallow them up, even though they know it's there. People for whom the greatest reality is not the mess of this world, but the faithfulness of our God. I think of Judy. She must have been in her mid-90s, but I really don't remember for sure. She lived alone in her tiny house, just a few blocks from her daughter, who helped her with meals and medicine. Judy seldom left home except for doctor's visits. She could no longer get to church or to the senior center. If friends and family wanted to visit her, they came to her house. I don't think she even owned a TV. But Judy read. She read her daily newspaper, dropped each morning into a basket through the little mail slot in her front door. She subscribed to several news magazines, to National Geographic, to the Lutheran, and to one or two theological journals. She read her Bible faithfully and prayerfully and had daily devotions. 
Whenever I visited her, Judy talked about her hopes for the world. She wanted to see peace in the Middle East. She hoped to witness the election of a woman president. She awaited justice for Native Americans and a renewal of the environment. She dreamed that her local community would experience a renaissance. She prayed that her church would grow in faithfulness and vitality. Astute, engaged, and interested, Judy had opinions about everything and the kind of wisdom that comes through experience. For me, Judy was Anna. She was Simeon. She was a faithful, devoted servant of God who recognized the darkness but waited for the light. She clung to God's promises, not with rose-colored glasses, but with attentive, attentive and expectant eyes, always watching and waiting for God to show up and bring salvation to a world in need. Luke tells us that Simeon waited for the consolation of Israel, while Judy waited for the consolation of her world. Like Simeon, she prayed, and she trusted that God's will would be done. And as she and Simeon and Anna watched and waited, God acted. Simeon and Anna did not see Roman soldiers expelled from their beloved Jerusalem. They did not witness an end to poverty and injustice. But what they did see was a poor young couple humbly entering the temple courtyard with their baby, bringing the offering prescribed for those who were poor to young pigeons. And to Simon, as Simeon and Anna looked upon Jesus, they knew that God was present bringing light into the darkness of this world. Simeon took the baby up in his arms and sang through tears of joy, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. And Anna spoke of the child to all who hoped for God's redemption. They knew God's peace through Jesus. And so did Judy. As I opened my communion kit and prayed with her, I offered her the bread of life and the cup of salvation. The body of Christ given for you, I said. The blood of Christ shed for you. And Judy knew peace. She would die before a woman was elected president, before wars would end, before justice could be accomplished. But she would go in peace for she had glimpsed eternity through her Savior. She knew that God would never fail her and that God would never give up on this world for which Christ died. And that hope gave her strength to keep living in joy, to keep working for justice, to keep striving for peace, to keep loving the people God had given her. What a blessing God has given us in faithful elders, in the Simeons and Annas and Judies of this world. They see life more clearly than most. It's sorrow, it's challenges, it's brokenness, and it's sin. 
but they see it all infused with the light of our Savior, whose love fills every moment, whose grace embraces every hurt, whose promises come to us in the smallest ways to fill us with the hope of eternity. God blesses us like them to live in the light, to not weary of doing good, and to proclaim in word and deed the good news of God's redemption. With them, we can go in peace. God's word has been fulfilled. Amen. Together we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called together through water and the world, we boldly pray for the church, the world, and all who long to hear God's voice. Almighty God, you grant wisdom to our elders in every land and generation. Give senior citizens boldness to share their faith and a spirit of curiosity and joy to continually learning as your disciples. We pray today for Christ Episcopal and Father John, 
St. Mark's Lutheran and Doug, Christ Lutheran and Pastor Katie, and Common Ground, Pastor Tom and Emily. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting God, you provide beauty and warmth in sun, moon, stars, and fire, and you give us abundant gifts of water, land, and air. Break our patterns of overusing resources across the world so that all experience your beautiful creation. Lord, in your mercy. Creating God. Thank you for your daily presence in our community and throughout the world. Inspire leaders with your strength and wisdom that all communities may be safe places for children, adults, seniors, infants, and youth. Lord, in your mercy. Incarnate God, thank you for being born among us and experiencing human pain and sorrow. Bring wholeness to all who live with chronic illness and rest your spirit on those who are near death. Strengthen the sick, especially Don, Egons, Tina, and David. Bless those who care for them. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, you encourage us through strong communities of faith. We pray for our congregation, those who worship among us and those who are absent. Especially we remember today, Tony, Sherry, Allison, and Megan, Bill, Jill, Austin, and Alexandra, Mark, Marlene, and Daniel, and Deborah, Keith, Kristen, and Kurt. Open our hearts and minds to new people and ideas. Bless our vibrant traditions that bring life and hope. Lord, in your mercy. God of hope, thank you for the saints who have gone before us. Keep us faithful in service to you until we are one with you, all the faithful departed. Lord, in your mercy. We place our prayers before you, God united in your spirit through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. As I share a few opportunities for, um, for service and fellowship, I do invite you to find the hand sanitizer in your pews and um, kill all those germs that we just shared along with God's peace. Um, today is a, um, is a beautiful and momentous Sunday because three things come together today. The presentation of our Lord, um, which we've already talked about, Super Bowl Sunday, and Groundhog Day. (laughs) So um, I thank the Opolinskis for bringing some groundhog cookies this morning. They may all be gone now, but um, this is good. It's the the trifecta of of liturgical celebrations to have all those things come together. We have a couple of sign-ups this morning. One is for the Mardi Gras. You can see Annie Harlan to RSVP to that um, wonderful um, Mardi Gras lunch that we'll have on February 23rd, uh, which is Transfiguration Sunday. And then you can um, talk to Sue about the Winter Cafe. That is on the 19th of February, where we will serve a meal to our neighbors. You may um, volunteer your time, or you may volunteer food. You may volunteer both of those things, and of course, you're free to volunteer none of them, but um, that wouldn't be good. Um, We have some opportunities, uh, there are opportunities to share our blessings today. Um, Kids will be in the back collecting for the Super Bowl of Caring, which is a nationwide effort to feed the hungry on Super Bowl Sunday. 
Um, so much money is spent on each advertisement, on, on hotels, on Super Bowl parties, on everything um, that, um, boy, more than two decades ago, it started with one congregation that said, let's raise some money on Super Bowl Sunday to provide soup and good food for people who are in need. That has grown so that um, tens of millions of dollars have been collected over the years. The, the money and the food is collected locally. It is distributed as each congregation sees fit. Ours will be shared with St. John's Food Pantry that we support and also with um, the ELCA Hunger Appeal. So if you want to throw some money into the pot today afterwards, if you want to, you may do it with a prayer for your favorite Super Bowl team. Um, not that that makes any difference. <laughs> also, there are bags of blessings distributed today. You may take those home and fill them with non-perishable food goods. They particularly would like some um, oatmeal, not instant. And they also need some gallon Ziploc bags because they get some food donated in bulk that they have to then zip up and, um, and portion out for families. So Ziploc bags are great if you've got some of those. We're also collecting shoes. Um, gently used or new shoes, don't bring old beaters. And there are boxes both in the narthex and down in the hints room that you can donate those for an upcoming youth project. Let us now worship God together with our offering. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the wonder and mystery of the Word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant 
vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, you we praise and glorify, you we worship and adore. You formed the earth from chaos. You encircled the globe with air. You created fire for warmth and light. You nourished the lands with water. You molded us in your image and with mercy higher than the mountains, with grace deeper than the seas, you blessed the Israelites and cherished them as your own, that also we, estranged and dying, might be adopted to live in your spirit. You call to us through the life and death of Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together, as the body of Christ, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your Son, the firstborn of your new creation. We remember his life lived for others and his death and resurrection, which renews the face of the earth. We await his coming, when with the world made perfect through your wisdom, all our sins and sorrows will be no more. Amen. Come, Amen. Lord Jesus. Holy God, holy and merciful one, holy and compassionate, Send upon us and this meal your Holy Spirit, whose breath revives us for life, whose fire rouses us to love. Enfold in your arms all who share this holy food. Nurture us in the fruits of the Spirit, that we may be a living tree, sharing your bounty with all the world. Amen. Amen. Holy, Spirit. holy and benevolent God, receive our praise and petitions as Jesus received the cry of the needy. And fill us with your blessing until needy no longer and bound to you in love, we feast forever in the triumph of the Lamb, through whom all glory and honor is yours, O God, O living one, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Come to the table. Feast on God's abundant life for you.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have fed us at your banqueting table with bread and wine beyond compare, the very life of Christ for us. Send your spirit with us now that we may set the captive free. Use your gifts to build one another up and in everything reflect your glory revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The God of glory dwell in you richly, name you beloved, and shine brightly on your path. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.